Hi guys, I hope you're good. I'm at Haybridge Basin at the start of the Chelmer Black Water Navigation. It's a 14 mile long canal in Essex and the plan is to walk the whole of it. I start my walk at Haybridge Basin near the Essex town of Morden, where the canal meets the Blackwater estuary. I'll walk for 14 miles following the route of the canal through the Essex countryside to the city of Chelmsford. The navigation is a canalisation of the rivers Chelmer and Blackwater. It opened in 1797, although there were plans and attempts to build a canal linking Morden and Chelmsford for over a hundred years prior to the opening. However, the port of Morden had opposed the canal for fear of losing revenue if vessels were able to take their goods to Chelmsford. That's why the canal was terminated a couple of miles away at Haybridge instead. A few minutes since my walk I came across this sign for boat trips. I could not pass off the opportunity, so I bought myself a ticket for the next departure. I was the only person on the boat, so I got the best seat in the house. To be honest, I was surprised that they were running boats on a Tuesday morning during school time. I was thrilled though to have the boat to myself, other than the two volunteers who were skippering. It was great seeing so many boats, and I wondered how busy the rest of the canal would be. I did notice that there were a lot of places that wouldn't be suitable for mooring, and all the boats were in officially marked spots. It had been so sunny the day before, but it was a bit grey and gloomy so far, and I was starting to regret my decision to wear shorts and a thin jacket. After about half an hour, we reached this cool looking building and turned around. The wind was pretty fierce and did most of the job of turning the boat. On the way back, I had a good chat with the volunteers who were crewing the boat. Essex isn't exactly awash with canals, so I've been wanting to come down here and check out the Chelmer and Blackwater for a while. I wanted to see if it might be somewhere I could live on my boat in the future. We spoke about moorings. I don't think they have residential ones, but leisure ones do come up from time to time. The navigation isn't connected to the rest of the English canal network though, which would be something to consider. They let me have a little go steering the boat, which was really interesting because it didn't have a rudder. All of the trip boats and lots of the other things to do with the day-to-day -day running of the canal are done by volunteers. They did try to convince me to come and volunteer with them, which I would love to do, if only I had the time. Oh my god, that was so much fun. They let me drive the boat and everything. Stupidly, I didn't think that it would be a return trip. Um, so it's an hour later and I still need to walk the 14 miles. But that's okay, I'm just gonna speed through this first bit that I did on the boat. It's freezing though. The downfall of many canals in the UK was the arrival of the railways. You often see canals and railways running parallel to each other, and I love the parallels you can find in their history and politics. I could talk about that all day, but that's a discussion for another time. The thing that is very interesting about the Chelmer and Blackwater navigation is that it lasted as a commercial waterway for much longer than other canals because there was never a direct rail link between Chelmsford and Malden. The last commercial vessel to use the canal delivered timber to Chelmsford in 1972. Ooh, golf course, golf course, golf course.
There are 12 locks in total on the canal, dropping the water by 75 feet along the 14 mile route. In 1948, many of the canals in the UK were nationalised and became owned by British waterways. The Chelmer and Blackwater was not nationalised at the time and remained under the control of the Chelmer and Blackwater Navigation Company and its proprietors. Commercial trade ceased on the canal in 1972 and during that time no leisure craft were permitted. A year later, in 1973, the first leisure boats used the navigation in an event organised by the Inland Waterways Association. Cows! I was loving the walk. I wasn't so much loving the fact I'd worn new trainers and was getting a blister. <laughs> I didn't want to have to stop, but I also didn't want to injure myself, so I did start looking for points that I could bail out if needed and come back another day to finish the walk. At Home Mill Lock there are lovely moorings. Walking through I could really see myself keeping a boat here. I always tell everyone that I like living in Essex apart from its lack of canals. I spend a lot of time at the marinas in Leon Sea and Benfleet but being on a proper canal with narrow boats was really making me wonder could I make this place work for me. Once I got to the end of the moorings, I realised I'd taken a wrong turn. I doubled back on myself and then saw the huge sign saying private keep out. The public towpath was actually on the other side of the moorings. The only thing that I didn't like about the canal is that there only seemed to be suitable moorings in a few designated places, so you'd always be around other boats. Many sections of the towpath were far too overgrown to just rock up and moor. It reminded me a lot of the Scottish canals in that way. And to me, it kind of limits the freedom that you're looking for from having a boat. Almost all of the canal is within a conservation area. It's surrounded by so much beautiful countryside. There are a lot of villages and small towns nearby, but they're all set back a little from the canal. It was great because it was dead quiet. The busiest place on the canal is Paper Mill Lot. They have more trip boats here and lots of other activities, as well as a tea room. This is pretty much the halfway point and I did seriously consider calling it a day. But there were no buses or taxis so I had to suck it up and carry on. I had a really nice break at the tea rooms and after a drink and something to eat I felt so much better. Commercial trade carried on on the canal until 1972, which was much later than a lot of other canals. That wasn't the only source of income for the canal though. Willows from the banks were sold to make cricket bats. Also, water is extracted from the navigation to supply the nearby Hangfield Reservoir. As part of that deal, Essex and Suffolk water must maintain the sea lock at Haybridge so salt water from the estuary doesn't contaminate the drinking water from the reservoir.
Oh, hello. It's not every day you see a pillbox at a canal lock. I wonder if it's used for facilities or anything now, or if it's just empty. I definitely regret not taking a closer look. I'm not too far from Chelmsford now. There was another nice moorings here. There are plans to make the centre of Chelmsford more accessible by boat, which would require some works to the canal, but in my opinion, it would be so worthwhile. As I said, the Inland Waterways Association were instrumental in opening the canal to leisure craft. They also organised a big rally at Springfield Basin in Chelmsford, following its restoration by them and other organisations in 1992. In 2005, management of the canal was taken over by Essex Waterways, a subsidiary owned by the IWA. Oh, nearly there. I feel good, but I'm in a bit of a rush because someone's coming to the house to pick something up and didn't bring their spare key, so I need to be there and we're kind of racing each other now. Nearly back at Chelmsford. That was so good. I definitely want to come back, do some more walking and some more boating. I'd love to live here actually. That would be so cool. I filmed this video quite a while ago on a day that I needed to remind myself of the things that are good for me and make me happy. And it really did. I love going out and exploring new canals, and I love finding new places right under my nose. I didn't stop talking about this day for weeks and weeks, and I can't wait to find the next place that does that to me. However, I was also very pleased when I did eventually make it to Chelmsford. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.